Good morning. This is workshop two of the four part onboarding plowed workshop series. The first item that we're going to cover today is emergency message. If you come to your user menu, the first item is configure an emergency message. This is going to place words or an image, whatever you put in this box, on the top of every page in your site. When the message type is disabled, it simply means that this is not going to appear. And then you have four options for background colors. I believe warning is red, maybe it's orange, danger is red. In any case, it doesn't change the structure or quality of the information. So I am in my messages folder going to insert a reopening infographic that was created by the Carroll Area District Library. They are a plowed library and they're happy to share this infographic. So I click here on upload. I drop a file. I'm coming to my computer and I'm clicking on the reopening infographic. And this is really important. You need to select the proper destination folder for assets that you add. And an asset can be either an image, such as a JPEG or a PNG, or it can be a file, such as an Adobe Acrobat PDF. So I'm going to select home to get me to my root folder. And then site assets is the, the structural home for assets. I open it on the right, and then I simply select images on the left. And now the current path is home to site assets to images. The title is four stage reopening infographic. And that is fine as alternative text. However, you wouldn't want this infographic to be the only method of conveying this information because it's not accessible. It's an image and it can't be read. So you're gonna to want to include um, the actual text of it separately. So I can also choose how to align my image and this is actually how to align it around text. So I'm going to insert it. And I'm going to center it. And we now have the four phase infographic. I'm going to scroll down and apply it. And now this appears at the top of each page. I can close it um, as the patron, but each time I reload, it's going to be there. I think it's actually each time I start a new session, it's going to be there. Excuse me. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and turn off the emergency message so it doesn't continue to reopen. Who can tell me what I would need to do to turn off the message type? And I'll give you a clue, it's here. What would I do so that this box no longer appears? And you can put it in chat or you can speak out loud, either way. Disabled. Exactly. You simply select disabled. Now this is still here. Anytime you want to turn it on. Let's say that this is actually about your um, public comment section for your board. So you don't want it up there all the time, but you do want it up there on board days. That will be a good use of that space. You do not have multiple emergency messages. It's just one field. Okay we are going to move on to the contact us form. So this is a pretty basic form. We would like to hear from you. If you would like to contact us, leave comments or ask any questions. So we have a number of required fields. We ask the patron's name, an email address so we can contact them. The subject, this is literally the subject of the email message and then whatever their comments are. There is something that you will need to do to make this form work for you. This is one of our homework items today, and it will be listed in the homework. You are going to need to direct this form to the proper email address. 
because right now it doesn't know where to go. So in order to make that happen, <clears throat> you click on contents. And then you can see the various parts of what make up the form. Here are those fields that we were just looking at, your name, your email address, subject. We also have a thank you object that thanks the submitter. And then the piece that you need to manipulate is the mailer. So you click on mailer. And if you'll remember, each time you open something in Plowed and you're logged in, it defaults to view. So you want to move on over to edit. And it's saying, hey, where do I send this form? So if this were my website, I would say you want to send it to me, my name and my email address. There are some additional features. You can select people to be copied or blind copied. And um, there is some additional information about the messaging and the form submission. Um, there is a little bit more to know about forms, but nothing that you need to know to make it work. So once you fix the mailer, your contact us form will begin sending you messages. And I recommend that you fill it out so that you can um, confirm that it works. If you want to add or delete fields, you want to come to your form. And when you see your form on your screen, click on Quick Edit. These are all of the fields. This is your ability to edit or delete them. This is your ability to add additional fields. Fancy stuff, field sets. Anytime you would like to create um, a complicated form, Plowed will absolutely do that for you, but it can be a little tricky. If you have um, a Google account, you also can embed a Google form onto your site if you find that more convenient. Um, I would encourage you just to leave the contact us form as it is. It's built in and all you need to do is change the one field and it will always work for you. There is a feature that you will want to take advantage of and that is the recaptcha feature so that when the person comes down here to submit, they need to click on a box that says, I am not a robot. Um, you will get spam if you don't because bots are out there filling in forms and randomly sending you stuff. So um, that is done by going to site configuration and entering a recaptcha code site key and secret key that you get from Google. And in a minute, I'm going to actually at the end of today's lesson, I'm going to talk about going to the help desk. And this is one of the things that we will look up. You do need to have an independent Google account in order to use this. And I would encourage you not to use a personal account of someone who works there, but an account that's set up for the library. Okay. Let's talk about navigation. There are a number of ways to get around the, the structure of your site, the internal part of your site. You can use the breadcrumbs. So this takes me home, just like clicking on the logo does. If I'm over here on kids and teens in teens homework help, I see that I can navigate to home, to the kids and teens folder, and then I'm currently at the teens homework help page. Let's say I want to not just edit material at this level, but I want to change how something appears. I would come in here into contents and I would see 
but I have a page, the page icon for free homework help sites and the distributed content icon, meaning I'm bringing this in from someplace else. And this little square indicates that this is the default view of the container. In, in simple language, it means that's what shows up when you click on the folder. You're gonna do a lot in here uh, and it's important to know how to get around. So for instance, we can go up a level and that'll take us to the kids and teens folder and we can see kids homework help and teens homework help those folders. In a minute, we're gonna talk about renaming a folder and that's a practical use for needing to get into this level. Also the ability to copy, cut, rename, delete, and change the state, meaning make it private of anything going on on your site. So let's say I wanted to make the entire kids homework help private while we uh, got the summer reading material ready. So we have a couple of options. We can do a future publishing date along with if we choose a future expiration date or simply hide the material for now. So I'm gonna save it. It now shows up as red. And I can absolutely get to it because I'm logged in. But because the folder is um, in the hidden state, my patrons can't see it. The easiest way to get to your root folder at any given second is to click on this menu and go to root folder contents. This will take you to the absolute base of everything in your site. So for instance, let's say you had accidentally been adding images and you wanted to move them into your site assets folder. You would come here, select the images, cut them, go back to site assets and images. And because you had something on your clipboard, it would allow you to paste. And I have done this in slightly different order than what I had on my table of contents. So we're just gonna have navigation um, at the, at the big level. So we did breadcrumb trail, we did root folder contents, and I want to show you how to go up a level. That's right here whenever you're in a smaller folder than root folder contents. Okay, now let's talk about adding images and PDFs to the site assets folder. We already went ahead and added an image to the um, emergency page. Let's add a folder, let's add a file and then link that file. And this is part of your homework as well. We're gonna do exactly this example with the board of directors. We're going to upload board minutes and then put them into the board of directors page. So we're gonna upload these, this PDF into site assets into the files folder. And this looks the same for files or images. I'm simply going to click on add files or images. I'm going to go up to my minutes and I'm just using the last LM board minutes that we posted, which were back in February. So here's the thing. What you see here is what is going to be the um, file name. And sometimes we'll want to change that and sometimes not. We are going to put our own text around that. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. So I'm going to start the upload. And it took just that long to be here. Now I'm going to open the PDF. And because of my computer, it then asks me to download that PDF. 
but for most of the, for security purposes, but for most browsers, it will simply open right in that window. So let's go ahead and go to our board of directors page. And uh, don't worry about that. I am going to click on add new. I'm thinking for a moment. No, I'm not going to get fancy. We're going to go to edit. Here's the board of directors page and I'm going to say February 6th, 2020 board of directors minutes. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to come here to this um, item that we've used multiple times, insert slash edit link. This is an internal link. I'm going to go home. And then who wants to tell me what to do next to get to my PDF that I uploaded? Either in chat or feel free to speak aloud. Site assets? Exactly. We're going to open it and then we go into the files. Yep. And we're going to open files. And it's going to show us everything in there. I select it. We're going to open it in a new window because we don't want it to take over our website and just title it February 6th board minutes. Insert. And now this is on our board of directors page. So your homework is to list your board members and whatever minutes that you have at hand, not, you know, years worth, but the last couple, go ahead and upload those on your site and you will have the video to fall back on uh, for instructions. I know that was a lot of steps, but there you go. Alrighty, let's move on to calendars. So um, your calendar is located under events, news and events, and it displays this way. So the first thing we're going to do is delete old content on the calendar. Those are these filler pieces like Wiggly Wednesdays and the Board of Directors meetings. So in order to access the content on the calendar, I would do just what I would do in any other folder. Remember how we were in Kids and Teens and I clicked on contents? I'm doing the same thing. Click on contents and I can see, oh, I've got all of these events in my calendar. Closed for Christmas, Thanksgiving, Labor Day, Independence Day. These are all recurring events. And we'll talk about the difference between recurring events and standalone events in a minute. But these are all set up so that they automatically display. So you don't need to get rid of those. You can adjust them if you need to. Um, I'm going to click on Wiggly Wednesdays. Board of Directors meeting, Overdrive workshop, annual sale and story time. Click on delete. And that is it. They are gone. Yes, you can undo that action. If you ever delete something and you didn't mean to, what you're going to want to do is contact the help desk and then sign out of your site. They can undo up to 10 bad actions or actions that you want to reverse. So if you have done 10 more things, you may be out of luck. So go ahead and contact the help desk immediately. And that is the, what we'll cover at the end of today's um, contents. So let's go on to adding recurring events. So we're going to go back to our calendar. And we are going to add the board of directors meeting minutes. This is again, part of your homework. We're doing lots with the board because everybody has one. And we're going to add a new event, add a new event. It's really the only option here unless you want to duplicate your entire calendar. So this is going to be titled 
board of directors meetings. Public welcome according to act and I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but so here's the thing. We now have a bunch of fields to fill out. You're going to want to enter the event start and end date. Whether it's a single event or a recurring event, you want to go ahead and put in the first one. So I'm going to say that my board of directors meetings are the first Wednesday of every month at seven PM and they end an hour later with any luck. Okay. The location, this is something that helps the um, events be more useful. So this is going to be in the boardroom. Oh, actually, you know, I'm sorry. These are all virtual right now. This is going to be in Zoom. Contact name is Bronwyn Egan, board president. And her email address is Bronwyn at gmail. And you, you get the idea. So if you fill out these fields, we'll see in a moment where they appear. If there's a, se a separate event URL, such as an agenda, you can put that here. And here we get down to this very discreet link for add a recurrence. I am going to say once again that my event repeats monthly every one month, it means every month. It repeats on either I can select a day of the month or whatever I have entered as my first event, it will default the first Friday, first Wednesday of the month. And then it asks, when do you want to end it? You can enter it after a certain number of occurrences or according to a date. And I'm going to say, I want this to end in on November 2nd of this year. So we have three more events. I can also exclude any individual event or add a particular date. So let's go ahead and add today. It's listed as an additional date. I'm going to save this. We have additional fields to fill out, list of attendees. Um, and then you have text that will go around your meeting information. You can also choose to add an image and we'll do that for our single event in a moment. And then you're going to want a lead image caption. This is your alt text field for this item. And we're going to save it. Once again, it defaults to private. I'm going to publish it. So this is the summary. That's going to appear at the top and in all Google results. The text field is what appears right here. You can add images within your text field. If you add a lead image, it's, it's going to lead the article. It's going to be up here. So this is going to show when these events are. First one is tonight from 7 to 8, and then October, November, December. Where? Via Zoom. Contact name, ability to add it to your calendar. Okay, we are now going to add a human library event. Um, this started in Denmark. You're probably, you've probably heard of these. Um, this is where you go and you meet a person who is different from you and you are able to ask questions and learn something new. So we are going to add a new single event and we're going to call this human library meet with a Muslim. So um, once again, I would always put in an appropriate summary because this is what Google pulls from. And I'm going to say our first attempt at this innovative program 
meet Aisha Muhammad. Okay, so we need to pick an event start and end time. I'm going to pick Saturday the 12th at 11 a.m. and let it default to one hour later. Location of this event is going to be outside the library, weather permitting, outside the weather in the garden, weather permitting. Okay, and then I would fill in this additional information, not add an occurrence, but for my attendees, I'm going to say limit of five attendees. And what we're going to do is um, have the ability to register for this event. Please register to attend. Once again, I have the text. This time I am going to insert a lead image. And this is actually a large photo, so it's going to look not great. it's just a little too big but here you go so our first attempt at this innovative program meet Aisha Muhammad and I would have information here more about what the human library does so we said please register to attend how do we make that happen this is a built-in feature of Plowd. you can turn it on or off for um, anything on your calendar you click here under registration and you do basic configuration. So we're going to allow, oh, here's the thing. In order to allow registrations for the event, you need to have set up that, that site key and secret key with Google. This is the other thing that it affects. They do not want under any circumstances your events to get filled up by bots. So um, I think think, uh, yeah, so fill that out first, and then you'll be able to turn this on, but let's walk through what this does. You simply click here to allow it, and then you can absolutely limit the number of registrants, so we're going to say five. We can create a wait list, and then allow people in if it opens up. You can add additional information here as people get to the place where they're actually going to register. And then it defaults to these fields. And I think we talked about this in um, the location and hours portlet. And if we didn't, this is true no matter where you go in Plowed. Everything on the right displays. So they're going to be asked their first name, their last name, their email address, and the number of attendees in their party. Everything on the left does not um, display, but it is available to you. So I'm going to select comments and move it over. And now the comments will also be available. The event manager. And then here are the emails that go out to people who have registered for the event. And it does take a little bit of editing in here. You don't want to mess with these fields. These are all uh, special. So you can absolutely put any other text around this that you would like to. So here's the thank you, or you've been added to the wait list, or when you've been moved from the wait list to the list of attendees. You can also export your entire list, and that way you can do an easy sign-in sheet. You also have the ability to simply at any point email everyone. So subject, weather is great. Come to the library for today's program. You're registered for meet with a Muslim. Ms. Muhammad will be in the garden from, what did I say, 11 to 12 today, we, we're looking forward to it. Send the email, automatic reminder, you can do this at any point. Um, and then we also have the local hop option. 
So let's go on over to mishlibrary.org. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on local hop. All of the information is here at mishlibrary.org under local hop. You can apply to be one of these libraries. Um, the cost is an extra $115 a year, and it has the ability to create pretty awesome, very awesome, community calendars. So this is an example of the community calendar in BadX. These are events coming from all over the community. You can view it in different ways. You can search by keyword by ages, categories, and these are all of the organizations that are participating in the community calendar in BADX. Um, so uh, you do not need to, or you don't have to provide a community calendar in order to go with the local hop option. We will still subsidize it for you with Library Services and Technology Act dollars. This is a commitment that we've made to this program. We uh, did a pilot for it last year. You can come and get more information specifically about the community calendar function. Um, if you're interested in that, here is the policy from the Cadillac Wexford Public Library um, that can be helpful if you're thinking, hey, how would we implement that? Um, Local Hop itself does a lot of support and they're absolutely willing to create individualized promotional uh, materials for you. And then here's Caro's story. They uh, joined Local Hop several years ago. And we were also going to do some additional stories, but COVID. So um, feel free to watch the materials, the videos here under Local Hop. If you come to general information, you can get to the video series. OK. And you can just let me know. Um, we're starting our next contract at the end of this month. So if you're interested in local hop, well, let me know in the next uh, week or so. Okay, so let's talk next about the other item. Actually, there's two other items under news and events. One is simply news. This is for, it's like a blog. I mean, as you add items, they appear on the top. It's not a very um, sophisticated blog, but you simply add a new news item. And this news item is going to be, we're reopening on September 8th. The summary is at um, phase six, because we're hopeful. At phase six, we are now welcoming patrons. I can choose a lead image, caption, text, just like I would for anything else. I save it, publish it, and now under news, it's the top item. And if I choose to display the news and events portlet, it will appear on the right. Uh, we are doing portlets, I believe, next week. Um, so we can talk about how you can have these display over on the side, just like upcoming events do. So you would delete these extra items, just like in the calendar. You'd come to contents. And if these are not accurate for you, you would simply select them. and delete them. Now you've got an empty folder. So let's go ahead and hide this so that when you're logged out, all you see are events and days the library will be closed. As long as that's the case, we should probably rename this. So the first thing we need to do is navigate to this level. Does anybody want to take a guess at how you would get to a folder at the global navigation level? Okay, we're going to go to our 
our, um, our always option, which is root folder contents. And we have news and events, which is at the root level. Here is news and events. I'm going to click it, rename it. calendar. I can also rename the URL. And now it reads calendar. And news is just showing up for us because we're logged in. Alrighty, now I would like to talk to you about some support resources. These are going to be really important going forward. So um, it can be a little bit difficult to figure out what does Sonia do at the State Library and then what does Enfold Systems do for us? Um, you are paying for a support desk. It is staffed by a man named Kim and he literally waits for you to contact him all day long. Make Kim happy, contact Kim. So I provide training. So these four hours um, are definitely all me. And when it comes to project management, at the state level, that's me too. If you ever have a problem with Enfold, you would come to me. But if you need everyday routine technical assistance, such as um, I have, I'm going to buy um, a new URL, a new web address, and I need it to point to my Plaid site, I don't want patrons to use the Plaid.net address. What do I do about that? You'd put in a ticket with Enfold. If you say, um, get to the point where, you know, Sonia told me in hour one about how to update this image or what this more button can do, but I don't really remember, ask the help desk. That's a help desk level question. So I'm going to show you two sources for support. The first are the videos at mishlibrary.org. And hopefully you've had some experience with these. I broke them down into these categories. Short introduction to Plowed, doing Plowed right in Michigan. This is by far the most popular video I did. It is ridiculously long, 16 minutes. Okay, I'm not expecting anyone to watch a 16 minute video. However, anything you see in here, you can have. And what I did was I simply reviewed all of the sites in the state when I did this, and I specifically looked for these elements. Quality graphic design, doing something unique, doing something interesting with cover pages or footers. Um, and so if you would like to get some ideas, I suggest doing Plowed Right in Michigan. I also suggest looking at Plowed Hacks Everyone Should Know. So these are things that you might not uh, think of and that I might forget to cover. Some of them are pretty little things, but the videos are fairly short and each one has multiple topics in it. So the first one is on cleanup and basic maintenance. The second one is simply tips and tricks. And the third one is specifically about looking good on the web. And it includes not just filling out your summary fields well, but it also talks about other things you can do to control your appearance and your Google business profile, which is um, you, something that, yes, you want to do your Google business profile. So um, some of these videos have also been incorporated into the Plowed Help Desk. So let's go back here and let's talk about how to access the help desk and recapture. That was the issue we were going to cover in the help desk. So um, we're going to go to get help and it's going to open a new window or a new tab. So don't be surprised. Here that is. You still got your website here, but you're now in cloud support. You have a couple of options when you get to this page. You can also search articles. If you fill out, if you start to fill out this form and you type in a word, it will autom, oh, it wants my name, one second. It will automatically start suggesting matching articles for you. 
So you can go there. Oh, how to add a reCAPTCHA field to my forms, event registration, reCAPTCHA configuration, and enabling event registration. Let me show you something else. If you type in Michigan, there's a bunch of Michigan specific um, articles. And you can see here that there are 12, but there are clearly not 12 here. Don't forget about show all results. It will simply open into everything related to Michigan. So let's go back to our reCAPTCHA example. Adding a reCAPTCHA field to your forms under general documentation. So there's an introduction that's saying, hey, we don't want bots falsely submitting stuff to you. And then there's a very specific set of instructions with links as well as screenshots that will walk you through exactly what you need to do in order to make this happen. Site key, secret key, and then where to go back on your site to install it. So once again, reCAPTCHA is not required, but the longer your site is out there, the more spam you will get. Nothing bad about Plowed, it just is what it is to have a form on the internet. If you would like to do um, event registration, you're also going to need this. You only need to do it once, both for your forms and for event registration. Okay. Um, another thing about the help desk that is helpful to know is that as you are searching and opening articles, the help desk system is smart enough to see where you've been. So if I go back to Cloud Support and reCAPTCHA and I'd open that one article and I were to say, hey Kim, I, let's see. I need, I'm just gonna be real general. I need more help with reCAPTCHA because despite the screenshots, I can't find where the secret key is. Okay. And the thing is, Kim will know which articles you accessed, so he won't send those to you again, because he knows how frustrating it is to be sent identical information. So the system is really pretty smart, and it's going to ask for your phone number, the URL of the page you were visiting, the type of request, is this a bug, a feature request, an incident, and then they're going to ask you about the priority low, medium, high, or urgent. And this generally reflects on the order in the queue and how long it's going to take them to address it. Low, I think, is within eight business hours, urgent's within one or two. Um, you want to know that they are located in Houston, so they're a couple hours behind us. This is what that reCAPTCHA field looks like once you've installed the keys. You simply click on I'm not a robot and then send your request. And I want to read you a quote from Kim. Um, he said, Sonia, I can't tell you how much your libraries are ahead of any other state when it comes to putting time into their sites. I can see your training is paying off. When a ticket comes in, the first thing I do is see if it's from a Michigan site, because if it is, half the battle is won. Your people have a better understanding of Plowed and its terms. So he likes you guys and he wants to hear from you. Okay, um, so that is the Enfold Systems Help Desk. And I noticed there was um, a couple other things at Mish Library that I had put on the agenda. So I'm gonna go back and cover those real quick. Um, one is graphics, which I actually covered last week, so I won't recover that. But the other is about, uh, it's about carousels. Okay, so this is under advanced functionality. And once again, carousels are, are not as popular as they once were, especially now that we have the hero image option. And so I'm not going to cover how to create a carousel in these classes. There is one set up for you on your template and you can simply change out those images and you can find information about how to do that 
in the advanced functionality section. One is on how to create the individual tiles and the other is how to put them into your carousel. Um, it matters what size you make them. It matters what aspect ratio you use to make them. And I also have some tips here on um, matching them to your theme so that the colors are identical. And once again, more places to go to get great graphics for them. So let's talk for a minute about um, what the homework is going to be. So if you have not yet done it, go ahead and update your location and hours. So your address, your phone, your fax, contact information, and whatever's happening in your library right now with COVID. So I would encourage you not to just put in what your old hours were. If you're currently open to the public, put in your hours. But if you're not, if anything unusual is going on, list that information here because Google will pick it up. Um, the second piece of homework is to come to the director's message page. Delete this information and at least if you if you do not write on demand, um, put your name and contact information, the name and contact information of the director here, and then start thinking about what kind of a message you would like for your community. And then um, add your own board minute, board, board meeting times to your events calendar. And um, maybe that'll be a recurring event for you. Maybe it'll be a standalone event, but go ahead and add board meetings as well as names and minutes and then update your contact us form so yep there are one two three four five things to do all around content um, and the situation is that I don't want you to leave this four-hour workshop series without having dug into your site and made things happen. Um, the more comfortable you get with um, doing all kinds of things on your site, the more comfortable you'll be exploring and adding new things. So uh, don't feel overwhelmed. Um, I'm going to send that out. And if you can't get it all done by the time we meet on Tuesday, I understand because I did not plan this well around vacations. But um, definitely be thinking about that material. Okay, I left seven minutes for questions. Does anyone have questions that we can go over about anything we talked about today, about last week's homework? Uh, either chat or by voice is fine, either way. Uh, Becky, go ahead and turn off the recording. <laughs>